like we said, being a top producer doesn't equal great wealth. You get those fat checks every deal, but the deals themselves you're relying on, the pipeline has to constantly be filled. And so you've seen it all, you've seen behind the curtain, and you've seen through all the BS that you hear about how this business works. You recognize that there's no 10,000 hour rule as to being a truly an expert and getting compensated for your expertise and being the person who's earned that right to be a top producer. You can't rely on being on getting your old clients signing up with you again. There's no guarantees that your pipeline's going to get filled. The brokerage always is taking it split off the top. There's just no certainty. And you can go through many periods of dry months. I know when I was doing real estate, there would be months, months on end, sometimes four or five months where a deal didn't go, a deal didn't close. Yeah, it was great when a suddenly a two or three deals closed at once, but there was periods of time where no deals were closing at all. And there was no certainty that any of those deals in the pipeline would close. And then we have the threat of technology constantly eroding what you're capable of doing. I just saw an ad on Zillow the other day about uh, Zillow buying your home and we have open door people like that. And that's just eroding what it means to be a real estate broker and putting in jeopardy your pipeline. And also that whole idea that there's still new agents flooding in and most of them are either living at home or they are uh, just trying desperately to make it work. What's more frustrating, if you've got zero control, you've got no control over the property, you've got no control over your clients. Once the deal's done, all is it that you get is a two to 3% of commission if you represent just one side of the deal. And a thank you, and that's it. A thank you for your services through gritted teeth, because to a seller, the brokerage fee that shows up on their closing statement that's an expense and it's an expense that they resent and feel like, well, basically that money's been stolen from them. So if you're tired of all this BS and I don't blame you, you should be tired of it. If you're the kind of person who loves real estate, you chose it as your field because you love working with it and you know your stuff too. Maybe you've got a knack for spotting a good deal, or maybe you're a wizard with underwriting or you really know how to connect to your clients and make them want to, you know, give you their firstborn child. Well, look, if any of that sounds like you, then I actually have some really good news for you. Because if you were to look at everything I've just mentioned as assets and liabilities, all those things about brokerage that you can't stand will go away, but all the skills and contacts become your true assets getting you that ROI that you know that you deserve. The real problem is you've been working with the right asset, but with the wrong business model. Sellers simply would not pay more than two to 3% for your services because that's the going market rate for those services. You could be a Nobel prize winner, an astronaut, win a Pulitzer prize and the president of a country all at the same time, but when you're acting as a real estate agent, all you're going to make is that two to 3% for those services. That's a market rate. And your only way to stay at the top of your brokerage's gross sales chart and to ensure that nice lifestyle is to just keep doing more and more deals. I'll talk about changing into the right business model in just a second. But for right now, just understand that Once you shift into that new business model, you'll wake up feeling a total respect for who you are and what you do, because you now have full control over how much you get paid, uh, when you get paid, how you get paid, who you work with, and how large your company will become. You're going to be able to generate recurring passive income. You'll bridge the gap between the you and the them, the them the people who own the real estate. You'll gain the respect of sellers and other agents and add massive value to your investors who are now your main clients. At the same time, you're gonna wake up and realize the true value of what you know, which 
in and of itself is an incredible feeling because every human being wants to feel like they're adding value and creating a legacy for themselves. So really quick, let me introduce myself and tell you who I am and why the heck you should be listening to me. I am, as far as I know, the only real estate syndication coach, real estate syndication attorney, and real estate syndicator out there who's earned millions of dollars with syndications for myself, for my team, and for my private clients. I'm a managing partner of Muschietti Law Group and the CEO of Altitude Syndication Founders Club. I'm also legal counsel to two private equity funds, which may not mean a lot to you right now, but it becomes extra valuable once you decide to scale your syndication from a small firm and into the big leagues. And also what most real estate professionals don't know, and you will, is that the same skills I'm going to be teaching you are the exact same skills that private equity funds and REITs use to manage billions of dollars in assets and make many, many millions of dollars for themselves. Whether you want to do just one syndication or 10 or become a publicly traded REIT, it's all the same basic strategy. And we'll take the life of a syndicator for a spin and we'll see what it's like to walk in their shoes. So if that's what you're looking to do in your real estate career right now, then you're definitely in the right place. Let me tell you quickly how I came to do syndications and then walk you through the five steps to become one yourself. Okay, I'd been a real estate attorney for 18 years, and actually I went to law school to become a developer, but after the bar exam, I found myself doing family law litigation. What became apparent very quickly was that people fought over two things during a divorce. The first one was custody of the kids. The second one was real estate. After a while, I realized that I didn't want to be taking people down, breaking things, attacking, because that's what I had to do to the opposite side in order to make my client get the better end of the stick. So I switched to working with real estate. I was so scared by the underbelly of bad marriages doing family law that I thought I'd never get married myself. Although I actually did have one client who kept marrying and divorcing and remarrying all the same person, so there seemed to be some glimmer of hope for me somewhere in that. Now, fast forward 10 years from that time, I met my beautiful wife, and we had just had our first son, Alexander. I wasn't getting much sleep with the baby crying. Although my wife was the one getting up at night, I was still really terribly exhausted. So I was looking for a way to increase my income without adding more billable hours to my day. It seemed like such a no-brainer back then. Every day I would look at my clients' closing statements and I'd marvel at how much money brokers were making. I already knew everything there was to know about real estate. How hard could it be? I asked myself. So I put my law practice on ice and dove into commercial real estate. I won't give you the whole story, but those turned out to be the leanest years of my career. Even though I did bring home big checks, they just weren't certain enough to give my family the kind of lifestyle that I wanted them to have. So I was one foot out the door when my partner came into my office and asked me a million dollar question. He said, hey, look at this. This property has huge upside. Can we syndicate it? And the rest was history. That first syndication took six months to close. There was a mountain of legal research to do to get funding done, a PPM to write, rally to get the investors committed and make sure the deal was funded at the close. We didn't know what we were doing and there was no set path for us in order to take to get that deal done. And this is me coming in as an attorney who's already familiar with the way those sort of things work, but I still didn't have all of that what it would take to do it the right way. But each syndication I did next was easier and easier due to my experience, plus the community that I built of ready to go to investors that I'd built in the process, plus that track record that we had. Eventually the process morphed into a system which I started applying with my clients, and I was really pleased to see that it actually worked for them too. And so today, what I wanna to do is just pull back a different curtain 
and let you take a peek at what REITs and private equity funds are doing to get where they're at today.